What's happening guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about the best FPV gear that you should be buying and flying in 2024. I made one of these videos back in 2023 and there's been quite a few advancements recently. So I thought I'd just start the new year off with making an updated one for 2024. I'll be talking about goggles, drones, remotes, and everything in between. We may see some new gear released throughout 2024. So make sure you're subscribed because I'll be releasing updated videos whenever that gear does get released. Whether you're someone who's just flying for fun or it's what you do for a living every single day, I wanna show you all the gear that I use on a daily basis to get the job done. Cause I know buying gear for FPV is just kind of a struggle just because there's so so much out there. So by the end of this video, my goal is for you to have a much better idea of what you want to get. And gear has come a long freaking way since I started back in 2018. It's gone from straight not being able to tell where you are or what you're looking at to full HD resolution setups. And nowadays you can just fly so far away from yourself without losing connection. And in my opinion, the biggest reason for all those advancements is that DJI has come out with their digital FPV system and has just been constantly improving it since then. So that's what I fly and that's what all the gear that I'll be talking about uses. I don't want you guys to be buying stuff that'll be outdated right away. And I can confidently say you'll be able to fly the gear that I'm recommending for a long time. DJI does have a couple pre-built drones of their own. One of them I really like and the other one I low-key despise. <laughs> but I'll explain more about that later on in this video. Anyways, let's get into it. The number one thing you can do to get the best FPV footage possible is hit the like button down below. <laughs> no, but seriously, it helps the channel out tremendously, so I'd really appreciate it. Now let's actually get into it. So to start off, let's talk about controllers. The controller that I use and recommend is the DJI FPV Controller 2. And then there's one more controller that I've recently started testing and I'll talk about that in a second. But the reason that I recommend the DJI controller is simply because it's so easy to set up and use. You can have this thing linked and ready to roll right away. I also just love the form factor because it really makes me feel like I'm playing a video game. Shout out to Call of Duty for getting me started in knowing how to control drones early. <laughs> but this thing has a six kilometer range, which honestly, most of the even super far out long range flights that I'm doing are no more than three kilometers. So it definitely has enough to get the job done. The other option that a lot of people use and that I recently just started testing out is the Tango 2 that runs on the Crossfire system. So this is the Tango 2 and as you can see, it's kind of similar to the DJI remote, at least size wise. And I do like that about it. To use this controller, you have to have an additional receiver installed into your drone. Usually when you order drones, you can just order them with the receiver pre-installed. And then the linking process is just slightly different when you're using this. And people like using this because with DJI, if you lose signal with the goggles, you also lose signal with the remote controller. But if it's on two different protocols, let's say I lose feed with my goggles, I can still have the radio link. So I'm still able to press the GPS return to home button. The range on Crossfire is up to 30 kilometers, which on paper is technically way further than the DJI remote. The downside in my experience is it's just a bit more complicated to set up compared to DJI. And I've had friends have a decent amount of issues just getting everything set up and linked. So for me, I'm sticking with the DJI remote for most of my quads, unless it's like a super long range drone like my 10 inch Helion. By the way, links to all of this gear can be found in the description down below. If you use those links, I just get a small kick pack, which just helps me make more videos like this in the future. So if you are gonna buy the gear, it would mean a ton if you use my links. Before I hop into the goggles, I wanna take a quick second just to talk to anyone who's playing planning on using your FPV gear to make videos because the gear you use to shoot the actual video is definitely important, but equally important is how you edit your footage and actually create the final product. The sponsor for today's video is basically a platform that will allow you to turbocharge the entire edit process, and that is Artlist. I've talked a lot about Artlist in the past because it's genuinely something that I use every single day to make the videos that you see on this channel. What it is, is basically a massive library of music, sound effects, stock footage, templates, motion graphics, and even editing software for filmmakers and videographers. The music that you're hearing in this video is from Artlist, as well as all the sound effects. They have a ton of different plans at varying price points, so you can kind of pay for exactly what you need. They even have different plans according to whether you'll just be using it for social media or for unlimited use on anything. You can also bundle everything together in one big plan called Artlist Max. Like I said before, the gear that you film your videos on is really only half the equation. The real magic of content creation lies largely in what you do in post-production. And for all of that, Artlist has you covered. So if that's something that you think will enhance your workflow, go ahead and start the free trial just to test it out. I'll leave a link down below and when you use that link, you get an additional two free months. Again, thank you Artlist for sponsoring this video. I could not do 
what I do with this channel without sponsors like Artlist. Anyways, let's talk about goggles. Okay, now let's move on to the goggles. In my opinion, there's three options for goggles. You could be flying the DJI Goggles 2, which is what I fly. You could be flying the DJI Goggles Integra, which I don't own, so I will have someone animate one here. Or you could be flying the DJI Goggles V2, which I will also have someone animate here because I don't have a pair. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the naming committee at DJI, but it's incredibly confusing. But these are the goggles two, and these are the goggles V2. The V2 ones are the older generation. The DJI goggles V2 came out in 2021, and the goggles two came out at the end of 2022. And then the Integra goggles came out a little bit after that. The V2s can be found anywhere from $350 to $450 used online. The new goggles two run around $650, and then the Integra goggles are right around $500. You would assume that the new ones are better in every single way, but that's not actually the case, and some people choose to stick with the V2s for that reason. For one, they're cheaper, which is a huge plus. They also have bigger screens and a better refresh rate. On the other side, the new goggles too, in my opinion, are way better to fly with. They have an OLED screen, better resolution, and are small and easier to travel with. Now, the DJI goggles Integra look a lot more like the DJI goggles too, and they actually came out after them. The reason the Integra are a little bit cheaper is because they don't have quite the adjustability on the screen, so if you're using glasses, I'd recommend getting another pair. But the Integra does have an integrated battery, like on these, the battery is separate, which I actually like better because you can constantly just swap out batteries. The Integra has a big battery built in on the back and it has remote ID built in. You're going to get a pretty similar range with all of these. So to be honest, if you're just getting into FPV and are on a bit of a tighter budget, I'd probably recommend going with the V2s. But if you have the cash to spare, I'd go with the goggles too. Next up is drones and you will notice that I have a lot of them. And the reason for that is different sized FPV drones are better at different things. So I'm gonna run through all of my favorite drones at various sizes and talk about which ones are better for certain things so you'll have a much better idea of which one you wanna get. Now, most of my quads are pre-built and ready to fly, which is definitely what I recommend if you're just trying to film cool shots because sure, you might be able to get better performance out of custom built quads, but it takes a ton of time to build. And if you're watching this video, odds are you're mainly wanting to get one to film with. Last year, some of my quads were running on an older DJI Air unit, but now I run exclusively on the new O3 air unit. O3, if you're not familiar, is just the unit inside the drone that transmits to your goggles. Most pre-built drone manufacturers now just always come with the O3. The first drone I wanna talk about is my number one pick for beginners, which is the 10 inch Helion long range drone. Okay, I'm definitely kidding, but I'll talk about this one a little bit later on in the video. The first drone that I actually wanna talk about is the DJI Avada. If you're a beginner, this is my number one recommendation. It's super simple to set up, really durable, and has great battery life. I actually still use this drone a ton for indoor drone tours, sometimes even over my sub 250 gram setups with stripped GoPros. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is it has amazing battery life. It has a hover mode that I can press if I ever need to adjust something mid-flight, I can just press the button and it'll stay right there. And it actually handles better than my smaller drones in wind just because it's a lot heavier. I just take a GoPro and mount that sucker on top because honestly, the internal camera on this thing is not very good. Up here is a link to a video that I filmed entirely on the the Avada slash GoPro setup if you do want to check that out after this video is over. And links to the Avada and all of these drones are down below. Next up, I want to talk about my top five inch pick, which is the Nazgul 5 from iFlight. You'll notice all of my pre-built drones are from iFlight because honestly, I've just had a great experience with them. I've heard some other people who haven't gotten the best customer support, but I know that's something that iFlight is getting better at. With these pre-built iFlight drones, the binding process is super similar to the Avada and it's super easy to do right out of the box. Anyways, this drone handles super well and is a great drone for freestyle, mountain diving, and even some close proximity stuff. If you put a bigger battery on this thing, you can actually do some pretty solid long range flying. The DJI pre-built version of a five inch is the DJI FPV, and I would personally not recommend getting that drone. They're super fragile if you crash, just not nearly as durable as these carbon fiber frames, and it doesn't handle nearly as well as the Nazgul. Moving on, I wanna talk about another drone that I use a ton for indoor fly-throughs and any other close range stuff where I'm near people. The drone I use for this is the Defender 25 for my flight. When I'm doing indoor flying, I just have this naked stripped down GoPro that I mount on top 
drop and it is a super tiny, super maneuverable drone to fly through whatever you want. You can get those stripped down GoPros at a few different places online. I just had mine stripped by a friend of mine. A lot of people also use the GoPro bones and that's another good option. The only issue with the Defender 25 is that once you put the naked GoPro on top, it goes over the sub 250 gram limit. So you can't legally fly it over crowds of people if that's what you're trying to do. The Gep RC Cinelog 20 is another option that I see a lot of pilots flying to stay under that 250 gram limit. I just don't have any personal experience with that one myself. Moving on, I wanna talk about my long range drones. The top two picks for me are my Chimera 7 and then the Helion 10 inch. I use both of these a ton, but I just wanna take a second to talk about the differences between the two. First off, let's talk about the Chimera 7. In years past, this has been my number one pick for long range. It's not quite as big as the Helion, but you can still put huge batteries on there and do these massive long range flights with it. It's perfect for big ridgeline dives. You just have to sacrifice a little bit of freestyle performance to get that. It's probably the drone that I use most out of all of my drones because it's a pretty good hybrid drone. I can put a smaller battery pack on this thing and it still handles really well, or if I'm doing a big long range dive, I just put a bigger battery on it and it flies for like 20 minutes. Now, near the end of 2023, Two Raw Aerials released the Helion. And this thing is the ultimate long range beast mode quad. <laughs> it's quite a bit bigger than the Chimera, which just means it's much more efficient in the air. And because of that, you can push this thing out to pretty insane distances. I have a whole review on this thing if you wanna go check that out, but in my opinion, it's the best long range quad out there. The only downside is that it's big. So if I'm going on a trip where space is limited or I'm going backpacking or something, I'll usually bring the Chimera just because this thing's a little bit tougher to haul around. But if I'm on a road trip or flying anywhere where space isn't the biggest issue, I'd much rather fly the Helion. As always, links are down in the description. By the way, all the footage that you're seeing in this video is color graded with my video filter LUTs that I just released last month. I originally designed them for color grading FPV footage, but they work with a ton of different cameras. You can use this on normal drone footage, Sony footage, like the video you're watching right now is color graded with them. And I'm just super excited for other people to be able to go out and use them. There's a link down in the description if you wanna check those out. Another drone that I wanna quickly talk about is my Naked Black Magic setup. So this drone is just a normal seven inch drone, but there's a stripped down Black Magic camera on top. So for any jobs where GoPro footage just won't cut it, this is what I'm flying. I don't wanna get super into depth about this drone in this video, but I do have a full video kind of talking about all the details of this. If you do wanna check that out, I'll put the link right up here. All right, and that is it for drones. Now let's get into cameras. With the new O3 Air unit, you can get pretty decent footage off of just the drone itself. But I would definitely recommend putting an action camera on top just because the O3 footage is fine, it's not great. There's a couple different options for action cameras. There's the Osmo, there's GoPro. Insta360 has a couple options. I've tested most of them and honestly just have I haven't found a camera that does better than GoPro. So I would definitely recommend just going GoPro. And if you are gonna get a GoPro, I'd recommend getting either a Hero 12 or Hero 11. The Hero 10 shoots solid video. However, starting with the Hero 11, they now have eight by seven inch sensors, which basically means the sensor is like a square. So if you're someone like me who posts on both social media and YouTube, you can either export vertically or horizontally. But the Hero 9 and 10 are also solid picks if you do wanna save some money. The last thing I wanna talk about is batteries. All of my quads are 6S and my favorite batteries to use on my five inch quad or when I'm trying to get better performance out of the Chimera are these 1500 milliamp hour CNHL batteries. I just got them on Amazon and they've worked pretty well for me so far. Then when I'm doing ultra long range flights, I use these full send lithium ion batteries. They have both 4000 milliamp hour and 8000 milliamp hour and you can just get insane battery life out of these things. When I put these on my Helion, I can get close to 30 minutes of battery time on one battery. With lithium ion, you lose a little bit of the snappiness of lipos, but for long range flights, I just don't find myself needing that. All right. And that's about it as far as gear I use on a daily basis. If you have any questions on things, feel free to drop them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And like I mentioned before, if you're interested in checking out my video LUTs that I use to color grade all of my drone footage, link to that is down below, as well as all the links to all the gear I talked about. I can't thank you guys enough for taking the time to check out my channel. I have a ton of awesome content planned for the rest of this year, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't wanna miss that. That's it, see you guys on the next one. Peace.